So uh, for liquid lymphoma, I think uh, we've come a long way, at least for the prognostic scores. I mean, we started with Flippy, Flippy 2. Uh, there's M7 Flippy. There's several other Flippy scores uh, looking to see if they can pull out the truly high risk patients. Uh, that has been somewhat of a struggle, I would say, because again, uh, the whole quote unquote POD 24 patients are ones that we still can't readily identify. Uh, even though there's some debate about the significance of POD 24 if we exclude patients or transformation, but I think overall we're still trying to find better ways to sort of fine tune the prognostic scores uh, with follicular lymphoma to actually truly identify the high risk patients versus the other 80% of the patients, which uh, for the most part do very well irrespective of some of the treatments we give and we'll expect to have long term survival uh, with some of the standard treatments. Um, as we move along and find out more of these sort of genetic markers that come up that sort of indicate, sort of implicitly in suggest that some of these patients won't do well, I think we'll continue to have more refinement of the, these prognostic scores and maybe some improvement. Now, if we look at some of the things we know right now, um, I think P53 is one thing that always stands out with a multitude of cancers that is a bad actor. Uh, unfortunately, we still don't have a lot of great ways of overcoming that, but I think some of the T-cell directed therapies such as CAR-T, and there's two CAR-T products approved for follicular lymphoma, and even the bispecific mosentuzumab, I think uh, intrinsically how T-cell activity, T-cell directed therapies work, they should be able to overcome P53 alterations. There's EZS2 mutations, even though the one agent we have, Tazimidisat, seems to doesn't seem to necessarily be uh, more efficacious of when we look at patients who have the EZH2 mutation versus not. Um, I should clarify that. They have a higher overall response rate, but the duration of response does not appear to be better whether the mutation is present or not. So I still think we're in the infancy of sort of figuring out a lot of these sort of uh, mutational markers and sort of mutations that we find uh, in follicular lymphoma and trying to implement treatments for them. Because as of right now, I think standardly, a lot of the treatments we give excluding Tazimidis that aren't really targeted toward any of the sort of mutations that we find, um, especially with the epigenetic uh, of, of changes that we see and with the mutational patterns that we see in follicular lymphoma. Uh, but a lot of the tumors are just as with chemotherapy or targeted therapies after certain receptors, which for the most part don't necessarily have been played out to very long-term responses.